Hello everyone and welcome to Network Playroom. This is the 15th video in the Christmas calendar series and this video will expand on the previous video or segue into another topic through it. So in the previous video we discussed different versions of the spanning tree protocol and discovered that some of them use ISL or 802.1Q encapsulation. And this video describes those encapsulations. Although we'll almost totally bypass or give only little attention to ISL and focus on 802.1Q. That's because ISL is a Cisco proprietary protocol and it's not in use anymore. You really shouldn't see ISL in modern networks today. So let's get started. So a trunk Trunks are used to carry traffic that belongs to multiple VLANs. And to know which VLAN a frame belongs to, the sending device adds a header to the original Ethernet frame, with that header having a field in which to place the VLAN ID of the associated VLAN. So the VLAN identifier is a tag that is encapsulated with the data. And ISL and 802.1Q are two types of encapsulation that can be used to carry data from multiple VLANs over trunk links. But as I said, ISL is deprecated and rarely, if ever, used anymore. So 802.1Q inserts a 4-byte header called a tag into the original frame between the source address and the type length fields. And unlike ISL, 802.1Q does not actually encapsulate the original frame, but simply adds a small tag. And that's why it's often called frame tagging and not encapsulation. So ISL would encapsulate the entire frame, but 802.1Q just adds a small tag. And because the frame is altered by adding this tag, the trunking device recomputes the frame check sequence on the modified frame. Uh, so the switch sends the Ethernet frame with a tag, and the tag is removed at the receiving end, and the frame is forwarded to the assigned VLAN. 802.1Q does not tag frames on the native VLAN and assigns all received untagged frames to the native VLAN. It tags all other frames that are transmitted and received on the trunk link. And by default, the native VLAN is VLAN 1, which is also the default access VLAN. And it is absolutely necessary that the native VLANs on both ends of the trunk link match, or otherwise a native VLAN mismatch occurs. So now that we've gone through all that theory, let's look at the individual fields in the 802. 2.1q tag. So I have a diagram from Cisco documentation here. So in this part, you see like the whole thing outlined. So this one is the original frame without the tag. And here you can see it with the tag added. So it goes between the source address and the type length fields, as I mentioned. And this part here is really the tag. Let me see if I can do this nicely. Nope. Uh, but yeah, this whole thing is the tag. So now let's look at all these different fields here. So let's start with this one with the TPID or the tag protocol identifier, which is a 16 bit field. And it is set to a, a value of 8100 in hexadecimal in order to identify the frame as an IEEE 802.1Q tagged frame. So let me write that down here. So it's tag protocol identifier and the field value is 0x8100. So it's a hexadecimal number. And then let's look at the priority. And this 
bit this is a three bit field which refers to the IEEE 802.1p priority which is used to implement QoS and the field indicates the frame priority level which can be used for the prioritization of traffic and the field can represent eight levels 0 through 7 because those are the numbers that you can represent in three bits but this is essentially used for QoS and then we have the CFI field which stands for canonical format indicator and the canonical format indicator is a one bit field and if the value of this field is one the MAC address is in non-canonical format and if the value is zero the MAC address is in canonical format. So the difference between a canonical and a non-canonical address is that in non-canonical the bits within each byte are transposed or swapped and in the canonical format of an Ethernet MAC address bit 6 indicates whether the MAC address is universal or zero or local or one and bit 7 indicates whether the address is an individual with zero or group with one address. So that was slightly confusing but I'll leave a link in the description so you can read more about the canonical and non-canonical addresses if you're interested. But this field stands for canonical format indicator. So either it's one or zero, depending on the type of format that you're using. Zero or one. Okay, and then finally, there's the VID, which stands for VLAN ID. So the VLAN identifier is a 12-bit field, and it uniquely identifies the VLAN to which the frame belongs to. And the field can have a value between 0 and 4095. So 0 and 4095. So that is essentially the 802.1q tag. It's not super complicated. It only contains those four fields that we just went through. But I have a nice a document that I'll also link in the description. That's where this diagram from, so you can go read that to find more information. ISL is also covered in more detail in the same document. But I hope this has been informative, and thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.